this work we've done on the uh, data-driven robust control for uh, uh, diabetes uh, therapy. And uh, diabetes is a, a, a disease that affects uh, millions of people uh, worldwide, and in, in, so it's a very uh, serious one. In this work, we uh, focus on um, a particular kind called type 1 diabetes, uh, that is an uh, uh, autoimmune uh, disease by which the human pancreas cannot produce uh, enough insulin uh, on its own. And this causes high uh, blood sugar levels and uh, in the long run, if not treated, uh, serious health consequences like uh, stroke, uh, blindness, and uh, kidney fa failure. And on the, uh, on, on the right, you can see uh, an example uh, of what happens to the uh, blood sugar levels uh, after a carbohydrate-rich uh, meal in a, a healthy subject compared to a diabetic subject. You can see that in the healthy case, uh, the blood glucose stays uh, within safe ranges, while in the uh, diabetic case, uh, the blood sugars go uh, dangerously uh, above the safe range, which is called hyperglycemia, and this is what we want to avoid. So the current uh, type 1 diabetes therapy uh, consists of two uh, main devices. One is the uh, insulin pump that allows for the continuous infusion uh, of uh, insulin, and in particular of two kinds uh, of insulin. One is uh, the uh, bolus insulin, that is a single high-dose uh, used to cover the, the demand uh, at each meal. And, and the other is the basal insulin, that is a continuous low dose used to, to, to cover the demand uh, outside meals. And the other component is the uh, so-called continuous glucose monitor that detects the sugar levels uh, underneath the skin. Uh, the problem with the, this current therapy is that these two devices don't really communicate uh, with each other in most of the cases. And uh, this means that the, it's the patient uh, himself or herself that uh, has, to, um, has to input in the device, in the pump, uh, the amount of uh, carbohydrate uh, for each meal, which is called meal announcement, and then the device uh, uh, suggests, um, suggests a corresponding uh, a corresponding value of the uh, bolus insulin. And this is not just a burden to the patient and uh, requires no non-trivial uh, amount of training, and, uh, but it has clear risks of uh, wrong dosing. And so to um, uh, overcome these limitations, uh, researchers for four years have been uh, studying the uh, closed-loop control uh, of insulin for diabetes, which is called the uh, artificial pancreas. So uh, you close the loop uh, by uh, sending uh, glucose measurements from the CGM to the uh, insulin pump. But the full closed-loop control still has uh, uh, non-trivial challenges for uh, essentially two main challenges. The first thing is that what we want to control is the blood glucose, but what we get from the sensor is a de uh, derived measure, and in particular, it's derived because it's, it's measured elsewhere, and, and you have uh, uh, delays due to, due to the transport dynamics, and second uh, is because this uh, sensor is uh, clearly uh, noisy. Uh, but the, the main problem is that the blood glucose levels depend on aspects of the patient behavior that are uh, hard to predict, and, and in particular on uh, meal and uh, exercise disturbances, and uh, w where meals uh, contribute to increasing the blood glucose and exercise have the uh, opposite effect. Uh, so the closed loop control of um, uh, insulin therapy is not just a medical challenge, but also a cyber physical system uh, challenge. And uh, in this sense, the most advanced um, commercial device is the uh, is by Medtronic, and, but this device allows only for the uh, closed-loop control of basal insulin, and so it still requires the, uh, the meal announcements by the patient, so it, it doesn't quite solve uh, the problem. <coughs> the problem being, um, the problem that we want to solve being that uh, we want to find, without explicit meal announcements, the, um, uh, the, insulin, uh, the, the, the insulin administration strategies that best keeps uh, the blood glucose within uh, ranges. Uh, and the solution uh, we propose to this problem consists of a, a data-driven, uh, robust, molecular controller that um, uh, addresses the, the challenges that I uh, just uh, introduced, uh, because it allows for the um, uh, closed-loop control of both basal and bolus insulin, and it does so 
uh, by uh, learning uh, from data models uh, of the disturbances that are used by the controller. And it also allows for the uh, accurate state estimation from uh, CGM measurements. And on the bottom of the slide, you can see an overview of the uh, system uh, architecture. Uh, we have the uh, robust MPC for computing the uh, insulin in a robust way with respect to these uh, disturbances, uh, disturbances that are bounded by, <coughs> excuse me, by uh, the uh, uncertainty sets that are learned, learned from data or that can be updated also uh, online as new uh, data uh, come along. Uh, the plant model that we consider is a so-called high fidelity model because it's, uh, it is physiologically accurate and is a, a nonlinear model of the uh, uh, glucose and insulin metabolism of a, a virtual patient. And, and then we have the state estimator uh, for uh, retrieving the plant state from the uh, noisy measurements. <clears throat> so, here we discuss how we uh, construct uncertainty sets uh, from data. So the idea is that we um, uh, start from input data that describe the meal and exercise behavior of uh, the patient or, or, or a group of patients that you can obtain, for instance, from a uh, questionnaire uh, data. And, and then we construct uh, nice uh, mathematical objects that uh, um, uh, somehow bound uh, the uh, real all possible realizations of these random disturbances with some uh, confidence uh, level. And as you can see on the on the slide, we have the, 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 those uh, gray sets are these uncertainty sets, and the uh, and the uh, red signals are the uh, data samples. And the particular technique that we use uh, uh, this, um, uh, is a, quite a recent uh, one and constructs uncertainty sets with probabilistic guarantees, meaning that uh, the solution of, of a robust optimization problem given these sets uh, has probability uh, arbitrarily close of being a solution of the original uh, robust optimization problem uh, given the uh, unknown uh, distribution of the disturbance. So uh, here I uh, want, just wanted to say a bit more about the uh, controller and, and the estimator. So uh, as many of you know, uh, uh, you know the, the, the functioning of uh, MPC, MPC works uh, by uh, computing a control strategy that um, uh, optimizes the performance of the system, uh, the predictive performance of the system uh, over a fixed, uh, over a bounded time uh, horizon, and it does so uh, by using a model uh, of the plant. But in our case, due to the unknown disturbances, we don't have only one possible future behavior of the system, but we have many possible uh, behaviors. Uh, and, and we handle this situation in a, a, a principled uh, way, we believe, uh, by formulating this uh, robust <coughs> Uh, min-max uh, optimization approach where we find the uh, insulin therapy that uh, minimizes the worst case uh, performance of the system with respect to the disturbances, disturbances that are uh, bounded by the uncertainty set that I uh, just shown. And as for the estimator, we use a, a moving horizon uh, estimator and uh, for those of you who uh, don't know uh, the functioning of it, um, uh, is the following. You, uh, you have a, a bounded history of um, past measurements and past estimated states, and what, this do, uh, what it does is to uh, uh, estimate uh, the state as, uh, as the one that minimizes the distance between predicted measurements and past measurements, and the distance between predicted states and past states. And so, in some sense, it's very similar to MPC because it uses also a model for the estimation, but it's also dual at the same time because the time window in this case uh, is in the past. And just, and it's also important that um, this moving horizon estimator uh, allows to um, uh, allows to uh, estimate the uh, disturbances. So we could use it uh, also f as a mill uh, estimator, not just as a state estimator. And we, we use this MHE and not uh, more classical Kalman filters because uh, this doesn't have a limitation regarding the uh, linear dynamics or the fact that disturbances must be uh, white Gaussian noise. Uh, we, we can have arbitrary uh, disturbances. 
So, um, we evaluated uh, our controller uh, in silico uh, so far, and in particular we compare it to a, a perfect controller that has uh, exact information about the disturbances and full state observability and a uh, non-robust variant that is the nominal controller that assumes no disturbances uh, are going on. And in this, in this experiment, we consider uh, data from the CDC uh, and HANES survey uh, that contains mean information from nearly 9,000 participants. Uh, what we did was clustering this data into 10 main groups, even though other you know, uh, finer, uh, finer grouping, finer clustering could, uh, could be uh, possible. And we construct uh, uncertainty sets uh, for each uh, group, as you can see on the, on the right of the, uh, of the slide. And uh, below we can see the um, uh, glucose profiles obtained by our controller in blue, and in uh, red is the non-robust variant, and in, in yellow the uh, perfect controller. And, and we can see that um, our controller has performance very close to the, to the perfect controller and outperforms the uh, non-robust one, being able to uh, keep the uh, blood glucose for more than 93% of the time uh, within range. I also had uh, other results, but given the uh, short time, I, I'm not going to, to uh, show them. And uh, we also experimented with synthetic, uh, uh, synthetic data describing exercise and synthetic data uh, describing uh, high carbohydrate intake uh, scenarios, so obtaining good performance also uh, with those. So, uh, this concludes my uh, uh, presentation about the uh, data-driven, uh, robust uh, MPC uh, approach for the uh, insulin uh, therapy, and um, we believe this is a, a first step towards a fully closed-loop uh, diabetes therapy that requires little or no uh, intervention by the uh, patient. And I wanted to tell you more a bit uh, uh, about uh, what I've been uh, working on in the same uh, area and what, what are the future plans. So uh, I've been working also on the uh, on another kind of uh, artificial pancreas controller, on, on PID controllers that are used, for instance, by uh, the uh, Medtronic uh, devices. And in this case, um, I've been working on uh, formal SMT-based uh, synthesis of PID gains uh, that uh, uh, ensure some safety guarantee uh, uh, when, when it's evaluated on a, a stochastic uh, model of the patient. And as for the future directions, I'd like to, to investigate human in-the-loop control, so how we can uh, improve uh, the controller by, by, by embracing instead the interactions with the patient and having uh, predictive uh, models of uh, such interactions. And uh, of course, the evaluation of the algorithms uh, on uh, real devices and patients.